Hello and welcome. If you look at a photograph of this uh, catalog here, you can see some details that make it look more realistic. The, this corner is down, this is loose, the page is up, some areas are squeezed down and the whole thing seems to be twisted. So, first I found these pages on IKEA's website and they're very nice and clear. I use Snip and Sketch to capture the images. I'm going to need, for example, this logo for the spine. And you can save them as JPEGs or TIFFs. And you can also capture some of the pages you think you're going to use. Okay, let's start with the box. The size of this IKEA catalog is 8 by 8.75 by 3 eighths of an inch. I'm going to use about 0.75 on the height for now. Add five, five, and three segments down here and click on create. Select the uh, box, right click and convert it to an editable poly. Now let's move these vertices closer to the end. This is to help with the spine area. Let's apply a bend modifier. This will create the bind squeezed area and the open or loose end on the other side. So type negative one will probably do. You apply another bend, this time on the x-axis Turn on the limit effect and move the limit near the end by dragging this lower limit number. After it's about in this area, then we can change the angle. And you can decide for yourself how much you want to bend that little corner. As you can see, this looks like the photograph. The right side of this is flat on the table and this is up a little bit. Convert it to an editable poly again. Select these, um, the polygons on the outside to make it a cover only. You can shift pull up to make a clone. Now edit the edges here to create a little bit of a curve on the spine. And maybe if you select this line along the side and the bottom too, we can add a chamfer. It doesn't need too much of a chamfer, just a little bit. All right, that looks like the cover. Also, the cover is going to be a little bit bigger because it has to wrap outside the other pages. So make this a little longer here and here. So that should do it. Next thing is maybe you can bend the edge of the paper a little bit. The idea is to do it so that it looks normal and natural, not too exaggerated, you know, just a very small area. Now I will use V-Ray Renderer, so I'm going to change that on my settings. Maybe now I can add some lights, since I have V-Ray Renderer already. A couple of plain, small lights in the area will be fine. You place it just in an area where you can cast a little bit of a shadow under the top page. Well, I need a table to cast a shadow to. So a plane will, will be fine. Now let's assemble the uh, two pieces. We have the uh, pages, the inside pages and the cover. So I'm put them together a little bit above the table. And we can add now the materials. First, I'm going to need 
a multi sub object material, one for each part. The cover will have three materials the front cover, the spine, and the back. So I can change the number here. And the pages, we only need two. Now let's add some submaterials, one for each. If you change the color on these submaterials, temporarily at least, it will make it easier to see what part of the object is going to be uh, colored or applied with what map. On the cover, I'm going to select the polygons for the top cover of the page. This way I can assign an ID number. So I'm going to unselect the spine on the, by, on the back of it. And as you can see here, it's already pre-selected as one. If it wasn't, you just type one. Select the spine here. You can see it's already assigned. And obviously the leftover or unselected will probably be three. Or in this case, it's two and the spine is three. Now I can apply the materials to see if the colors match. So now I can add the maps. I'll drag from my desktop. And we're going to put them on the diffuse channels. Now later you can decide how shiny or reflective is the cover because this is semi, you know, glossy paper. I'm just going to use flat colors right now. This IKEA logo is not the size of the spine. It's too small. I need to edit. So if you open the file, the JPEG in Photo Viewer, you can always open Edit and Create. And down here it says Edit with Paint 3D. That has a feature that if you select here Canvas, it would allow you to change the background. You can see the numbers here. You can just type the number or you can just grab the handles and expand until you you decide how much you, you want to see of this background. So I'm going to save the image now. Now I can apply it to the image on the spine. I'll get it a little closer so we can see the render. Now the render shows the map okay, but some things are distorted. There's a, the cover is not right and there's an extra line here. So we apply a UBW map in this case. You have a planar map. The cover is finished, is corrected, but the spine is wrong. Open the bitmap to correct the spine problem and change from UB to BW. Now you can see the logo is here now, but it's upside down and reverse. So we can change here 180 degrees on U and W. And that should correct it. Now the whole thing has to be, can be repeated for the inside pages. Any, uh, anything like this can be mapped uh, by polygon. So uh, for example, if one of the squares only had to have a label or something, you can make that square, uh, you can give that square a different ID uh, number 
and then you assign it the map to it. So I forgot to mention that for the edges where the the paper is stacked up, I downloaded an image from the web that has this image of uh, stacks of books and newspapers and things. And I only select the area that I think looks like a magazine. So apply the crop and you should be okay there. Now notice uh, we're not using Turbo Smooth at all here. This is just all planes. So since paper is a little bit transparent, notice this corner here. I'm going to add on the uh, cover here just a tiny bit of refraction, maybe a, a value of one in the black area. And just that is enough to get a little light in this corner. So if we look at it from this angle and the page is up a little bit more, you can see better the, uh, the result. Now we can, you know, add the details that make it look more realistic. And these are the things we saw in the beginning. We had to distort the pages a little bit because a magazine is handled, mishandled, thrown, and bent, and, and curled up, so everything happens to it. In this case, I'm going to do just a few things I saw in the, uh, in the photograph, as you can see here. The front of it is too straight here, so I think we can also do a little bit of distortion here. Sometimes uh, people will write me and ask me, why does it look so real? Is it a photograph? And I have to explain that these are the details that make it look good. In the final, I just took the whole catalog and made it, made it a little thinner. Now, if you select the whole catalog, you can add a twist. And if you look at magazines and you put them on the table, you'll notice that they don't sit flat perfectly anymore after being handled. So a little bit of twist here is fine. And if you pay attention to detail, this is what you will get in many other things. So thanks for watching.